Let's go ahead. Cover up. I wanted to ask you about your experience so far working with, you know, Jeff Collins, you know, just kind of what's it been like being around, you know, obviously his energy. It sounds like he wants you all to, you know, play more aggressively this year. Just what's that whole experience? Um, it's been a great transition, honestly. Um, he's brought a lot of fire and, you know, energy to our defense, like you said. And um, I feel like he's also let the, the guys kind of just be themselves and, you know, make plays and just, you know, embrace the chaos, embrace <laughs> the chaos it is of being defensive, embrace the chaos that he brings and, um, just be a family, all be one together. Does it feel freer when you're out there, you know, playing and getting reps in? Um, yeah, I feel like it feels a little bit freer. Then I also feel just, um, he just lets us play with a, a different kind of edge. You know, he's an edgy guy himself, so he just wants us to be on edge all the time. So, How have you tried to embrace the chaos? Um, just go at it full speed, full throttle, and trust his word and trust what he has aligned for us. And um, give him everything he got because he's coming in to give us everything he's got. So, What's it been like sort of? Assuming the leadership role, Seth was here, he was loud, and, and now you're in that role, sort of in the middle. Um, you know, me and him both led together last year, and just kind of picking up a little bit where the, he's left off, and of course the vocal spot, just how loud and um, how vocal he was, just kind of picking it up in a sense of just taking that next step of taking in my leadership, and you know, the guys looking at me as the leader to lead this defense and be vocal and let them know like what the standard is and what the tone is for today. How's it sort of passing that down to Amari? Um, yeah. Amari, that, he's a uh, he's more of a young veteran. He's like a rookie, but he's a vet, so he he's way ahead of the game in the terms of um, just the scheme and everything. And he's a great player, and he's going to be a great player for years come. What were some of the personal points of emphasis for you to to apply this year and maybe enhance your stock at the next level? Um, I would say just improving each and every day, improving, stay, staying where my feet are, and just improving each and every day in terms of scheme, in terms of technique, in terms of you know eye discipline, um, and just bettering myself and improving my stock and you know improving myself each and every day, one percent better every day. We hear eye discipline a lot. I'm curious to know from your vantage point, what is eye discipline for you in your position? Um, eye discipline for me in my position, seeing my keys, the line scheme, um, reading the line scheme, and diagnosing exactly what the line scheme is giving me, so I can know exactly what play is going to be run. Um, and just being in the right position at all times. So how much of a process is that for a good, being a young guy when you came up to where you are now? Um, I would say freshman year, uh, being behind Gimlin, just learning from him. Then sophomore year, starting. Then my junior year, I feel like it really slowed down my junior year. Then now it's a game, you know what I'm saying, with a new coordinator. Um, it's slowed down a lot to where he can bring a whole new defense in and I can pick it up really quick. So now it's kind of like refining. Yeah. How are how what are you being asked? What are your the linebackers being asked to do differently or the same um, from the defense you were in last year with Coach Chizik to the defense you're in this year with Coach Collins? Is I, there a big I feel difference? Like, I feel like this, it's not a big difference. I feel like the same thing. To be be leaders of the defenses, play with the edge and make plays. Um, get everybody lined up in the correct alignment and assignments, and uh, play smart and play tough. And so, so the scheme is. Would you say the scheme is similar? Or? The scheme is similar. Yeah. How does how is your job affected a little bit by the rush position, which was Jack, which was hybrid? How how are those, how is that spot different now, and how does that change what you do? Does it change it at all? Are you guys kind of sync together. I don't think it's necessarily changed at all. I feel like we just kind of with, within the defense, not asking us to do as much, but to be you know rushers and ends and defensive ends, not to be as much so um, drop back pass guys and uh, play in a lot more space ones and play and affect the quarterback more. How are some of those guys, obviously, you know, you and Amari kind of, you know, in there being the main guys right now. Who are some of those guys, uh, I guess, under y'all, if you want to say, on the depth chart that you've kind of seen, you know, make strides for us? Um, I feel like every single one of them has made strides. Uh, they, we all got great players in our room. I would say I'm going to start with uh, Mike Short, uh, Caleb Lavely, Ashton Woods, a freshman that's just come here, um, Cade Law, all those guys, um, all those guys, each and every day, they uh, – do great things and they get better each and every day. You'll never see them make the same mistake twice. So. One of the things that, that along those same lines that Jeremiah is talking about is, you know, Mac has been saying forever, we need to play more guys, we need to play more guys. You, you've played a thousand, a million snaps here. Like, can those guys that you're, the Michael Shorts, the Caleb Little Valleys, can they be ready to play this season to give you guys more rest? Yes, sir. Of course. I feel like I trust those guys because I see what they do each and every day, and I see the strides they make each and every day. We got a great room. We got a special room of guys, and they bust their tail each and every day, and they um they understand what's going on in the defense. So um, I feel like by the time August comes and we really fine tune and we all just focus on football, I feel like they'd be ready to go. Power, what's it been like 
having coaches in your ears this time rather than have to catch everything from sign. Well, I had a little bit of that during the, uh, the bowl game last year, and I feel like it's it's really cool. It feels like um, you know you're like in a war battlefield. You got like a walkie <laughs> talkie next to your ear. Kind of all right, but, um, <laughs> but I feel like it helps a lot, especially for the uh, the younger guys that play the mic position. Um, and you know, dig being in the headset and just kind of let them know what's coming at their their way, what to look for within the play. So um, I feel like it just it helps a lot. Oh, we're hearing a lot of positive things about Travis, about how he's changed. He's up for front row in all the meetings. He's always on time. He's doing all the things he's supposed to do. And his play on the field has, has improved a great deal. What have you seen from Travis? Um, I've just seen Trav honestly just grow up and be, be who we want him to be, who he needs to be for us, for this team just to take the next step. Um, especially when he first got here, when his freshman year, I feel like he just kind of, he was just young, he was just himself, but I feel like he's kind of grew up now, and he's understanding his uh, importance to this team. As a leader of the defense, is there a Travis moment where you said, hmm, this is different, this is more mature Travis now? Um, I would say I've always loved Travis ever since he got here. He's, he's my dog. Uh, but honestly, I would say um, I usually get here early in the mornings, and I've kind of just seen him being in there at the same time I've kind of been there. So I was like, yeah, that's he's locked in. Is that a surprise? No, it's not a surprise. It's just one of those things where it's like, okay, I see you. I don't know. You might have to correct me if I'm wrong, but I was watching the, uh, the ACC like practice that you guys had. Did, uh, did Jeff Collins name a, a drill after you? Uh, uh, he did. It's called. I think it's called. He, it's called a uh, Ty White drill. Now Ty kind of took the name, but um, uh, it's basically a drill where you throw the ball up and you gotta like strain and dive to get it. But yeah, yeah. is it a rotating of who? It's a ro- rotating whoever catches the ball doing that same instance. So. <laughs> or I meant like, is it a rotating of who who gets the name of the of the? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The drill? Okay. On the power on the helmet communication that Tommy was talking about, do you all have to practice like you coming out and? Do you trade? I guess do you trade the helmet? You, you can't. Two separate helmets, right? Yeah, we have two. So I, I, right now, I don't have the, the walkie-talkie in my head. It's mostly for the, uh, the the mics and the young guys. But right now, um, as as far as the season will go, I'll probably have the mic more. But I already know how the you know the mic the mic goes now. So I already don't need it from me in the standpoint of you know I I kind of know the defense a little bit more fine-tuned than the young guys, so they probably need a little bit more than I do right now. I got you. I just didn't know if, like, because don't you have, if he comes out, doesn't he have to give it yeah, to someone else? those guys will have two helmets. So <laughs> if he comes yeah. out and he wants to talk to Amari, like, we're not left, but you can only have one on the field. Right. The top and it's one on the which quarterback Which probably be him sure. in the season. But if he's getting blow, it could be Mike Short, it could be Amari. Yeah. So I just didn't know if they were practicing the, the trade-off or whatever. I don't think we need to yet. Yeah. We got you. The green god color, right? Right. Yeah. Right. right. So I wanted to ask a little bit about your like pre-game or pre-practice routine. Like, what do you eat and drink to like make sure you're fueled up? Um, I would say pre-game, I like salmon, rice. I keep it a lot light. Then um, Gator lights and a whole lot of uh, water throughout the day. So just stay hydrated, you know, because we're going to go out there and play a lot of snaps. So mm-hmm. stay hydrated, stay fresh, and, you know, never cramp up or anything like that. Yeah. Did you, like, navigate that routine with the nutrition department with the team? Um, for sure. I feel like they helped me a lot, especially with the, um, the Gator lights. I feel like it was a new thing last year, mm-hmm. and they really help a lot in hydro- re- replenishing uh, my life. And specifically, what's your relationship like with Amber and like trying to just figure out what works the best for you? Um. Great, especially when she first got here, she uh, really helped me work work well with what I what, what I what, what I liked, what they had for me, what mm-hmm. you know, what I'm saying just trying to figure out what's best for both of us and within the nutrition. So. And as someone who saw, I guess, pre Amber versus Amber now, what difference did she make on um, coming to the nutrition department? I would say more um, more organization, but like, how can I put it? More not rigorous, but just aggressive organization like she, <laughs> she's, she's fired she's fired up she's fiery but she's make sure you know everything we she really wants us to have everything that we need to make us perform the best mm-hmm. on the field so and is there anything specific that she like introduced you to that you're a big fan of um i would say just micromanaging and trying to figure out like what's best to eat throughout the day and what I can do, you know, what times I can best eat throughout the day to make sure I maintain weight. Yeah. Are there any certain foods that you really enjoy that she's introduced you to? Um, or drinks? I would just say, honestly, get her like That's yes. probably my favorite. The <laughs> common answer, yeah. yeah. Power with, with, with Jeff Collins and the defense and just the 
the aggressiveness and the pressuring that it looks like you guys are going to do. Like, have you seen anybody, a DB maybe, uh, you know, getting in there on a blitz where you've been like, you know, wow, this could really sort of highlight this guy's strength or a DB that you didn't know was good at rushing the passer before that you've seen like, man, this guy can, you know, he can get off the edge and get after the quarterback. Um, Anything like that? Trey Miller, Stick Lane, um, then De- we have DeAndre Wilkins coming back off the injury, and he'll be back with us in by May off ACL injury uh, he suffered during uh, fall camp last year. And I feel like it plays well into his playing style, how aggressive and physical he is as a defensive back. So um, those three guys, I feel like you, you'll see them pop up on the screen. Staying on the DBs, actually, when I ask you about uh, Tyrone Stewart or Dooley, um, he's somebody that you know Matt Brown and honestly Jeff Collins has you know kind of mentioned in that you know cornerback slot. Coming from that JUCO level, like kind of how have you how have you seen him you know step up and how would you characterize him? Um, Dooley is a dog. Like like you said, he came from the JUCO level, so he has a chip on his shoulder and he comes out every day and plays with a fire and passion and uh, energy and swag that you just can't you can't replicate. You good? All right. Thanks. Thanks.